If you're going on a cruise, there's something really important that you should know. The rules for what you can and should bring on board on embarkation day are completely different from when you are going on a plane. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, embarkation day is honestly one of the very best days of a cruise, but I know it does really get confusing, especially when it comes to what should I pack for my boarding day? What are the rules? What am I allowed to bring? What am I not allowed to bring? Now, while I've talked about this in past videos, there have been some things that have changed this year. And as well, there are some questions that come up that I don't think I've ever answered before in a video. So in this video, I'm gonna go through about 20 cruise luggage rules for embarkation day. What are the main things that you'll want to pack for embarkation day in your carry-on bag? And I'll answer some commonly asked questions. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, make sure that you pack a carry-on size piece of luggage, a duffel bag, a backpack, a large tote bag, something that can be used as a carry-on bag to pack your essential items for the first day of your cruise. Now on your embarkation day, you are gonna drop off any of your checked luggage, but you do wanna have the items that you are going to need for the first few hours of your cruise as it will take a little bit of time to get that luggage delivered to your cabin. Now, what are the rules for the size of the carry-on bag? Now, while there are no strict rules about the size, it does need to fit through a security scanner or an x-ray machine, very similar to the ones that they have at the airports. The TSA guidelines or the lack of TSA guidelines. So when you are boarding a cruise ship, you do not have to follow any TSA guidelines. There are no rules for the amount of liquids that you can bring on a cruise ship. Now, of course, if you're flying over, make sure that you follow all of the rules that you need to for flights, but you can actually repack your items before you get on your cruise ship. And what I like to do, and I always suggest people do, is arrive at your cruise port the day before your cruise. So you can really pack intentionally and only bring the items in your cruise carry-on bag that you are going to need for the first day of your cruise. Now, one of the most important things that you're gonna want to make sure that you have in your cruise carry-on bag are your medications. So you wanna have, of course, your prescription medications. Now, I know sometimes people ask, can I bring my medications without having the original container? So while there's no rule against this, it is suggested by many cruise lines on their cruise line website that if you wanna avoid any potential problems when you are traveling, to bring the original containers for your medication. Now, something else that's a good idea when you are traveling and cruising is to keep a printed list of your medications or to have that in your email. Now, in addition to your prescription medication, don't forget to keep any pain relievers or any other types of medication that you might use that are over the counter. Make sure that you keep them on you when you're boarding the cruise ship as well. Now you might be wondering, why do I even wanna wait for my luggage to arrive? Why don't I just board the cruise ship with my luggage? Well, you actually can. So as long as your luggage is small enough, so for instance, if you have carry-on size suitcases, you can definitely do this. However, something important to know is that your cabin may not be ready. Actually, there's a good chance that it won't be ready when you board. So you will have to kind of lug those bags along with you for the first hour or two, or even sometimes a little bit longer on embarkation day. And different from when you do go to a hotel, you will not have a place to be able to put your luggage unless you are able to drop off your items in your cabin, which is not always permitted. Now, super important, probably the most important thing is to keep your passports. I like this passport holder. I keep my passports in here. Or if you don't have several passports with you, then you might want a single passport holder, but make sure that you do have your passports, your government ID right on you when you are embarking. Don't put it in your checked luggage. Now, I hate to give this dire warning, but it has happened to people before, so I will let you know if you leave your passport in your checked luggage and it is taken away, it is unlikely they will be able to find that before boarding is done. And unfortunately, you run the risk of being denied boarding for your cruise. Now, another thing to keep on you, so right in your handbag or in your pocket or in a neck wallet even, but is your wallet along with your credit cards. And as soon as you do get into your cruise cabin, so as soon as you're able to, make sure that you do put that away in your safe as you're not going to need that on your cruise. You'll be given a cruise card instead. And that's what you're gonna be able to use to make all of your purchases on 
on your cruise. So what should you pack in your cruise carry-on bag? Well, it is going to differ depending on your itinerary and of course what you consider essential for the first day of your cruise. But a few things that many people do bring is a change of clothes. So you may want to freshen up a swimsuit and flip-flops and cover-up. Don't forget sunscreen if you do plan to be outdoors and if you are on a hot weather itinerary. Anything valuable, so that includes jewelry and that includes electronics and that includes things like laptops or iPads. Of course, you wanna make sure that you bring your medication. You may also want to bring something to freshen up like toothbrushes, makeup, and other toiletries. By the way, if you're getting ready for a cruise and you're looking for an embarkation day checklist as well as other cruise packing lists, I do have that included in the LifeWell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner. Now, the LifeWell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner is a 47 page downloadable printable cruise planner that will help you to keep organized as you get ready for your cruise from the time that you book your cruise all the way through disembarkation. Now, if you are interested in seeing what's included in the LifeWell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner, I will leave all of the information linked down below in the description of this video. Bringing beverages on board a cruise. Now, this is definitely something that is different from when you are boarding a plane, but cruise ships do on the most part allow you to bring some amount of beverages on board a cruise. Personally, I feel like I've really changed in this area because oftentimes I have had a beverage package in recent years, but if you don't have a beverage package, it can be nice to bring some of these beverages as it does save a little bit of money. Many cruise lines allow you to bring wine on board. Now the rules are going to be on each website, so you might wanna check that out, but typically what is allowed is one bottle of wine per adult in a cabin. Now, sometimes you can bring more than that. The cruise line will usually charge a corkage fee of 15 to $20. And again, you can find out all of that information on your cruise line's website to see if it's worth it for you. Bringing water bottles or soda on board a cruise ship. Now, some cruise lines will allow you to bring small amounts of soda on board a cruise. So this could be about 12 cans of soda. For instance, Carnival will allow you to do that. Now you do need to bring it on board with you and carry it on embarkation day. Now, when it comes to water bottles, I used to bring water bottles with me a few years ago. However, these days, I I think there are some better and easier options, including ordering water bottles to your cabin or bringing a refillable water bottle. Now, in many cases, cruise lines have started to ban those single water bottles and instead are using cartons or aluminum type cans on board. So sometimes those are the ones that are allowed on board and not water bottles. So make sure that you do check before you show up on embarkation day, do check your cruise line website to see what is allowed and what may have changed from your last cruise. Now, if you like to use a lock for your luggage, make sure that that lock is a TSA approved lock. You can put that on your carry-on luggage and of course you can put that on your check luggage as well. Or in some cases you may have that TSA lock that is integrated into your luggage. Now, while this is not a necessity, I highly recommend it. It is to bring a cruise lanyard or a cruise card holder. Now you are going to be taking out your cruise card well, so many times a day, you're gonna use it to pay for things on your cruise. You're going to use it maybe to reserve towels on your cruise. You're gonna use it a lot. So you wanna be able to have that handy and not to have that in a pocket or in a handbag. So it is a good idea to bring one of those. Pack a form of seasickness prevention just in case. So it could be C-bands, it could be a patch behind your ear, it could be an over-the-counter medication like Dramamine or Bonine, but make sure that you do have that with you just in case. Now, if you're cruising with kids, make sure that you do bring the items that you're going to need for them and make sure that they have things that are gonna occupy them for the day as well. So of course, if you need swimsuits and sunscreen and all of that kind of stuff, if you have a baby, make sure that you do have a diaper bag. If you have young children, maybe they might wanna bring a backpack of their own with a few of their favorite toys or some books or a video game. And if you do think that you'll spend time at the pool, don't forget to bring goggles and maybe even a waterproof phone case if you are around water and you do wanna take some photos. Now, another thing that I always like to pack and have on me are portable chargers that are with me as well as my water wires and my chargers for my cabin. Now I have a few more items that you might wanna pack. Some of them are optional. And I also am gonna answer a question that a lot of people ask, including what should I not bring on a cruise on embarkation day? 
pre-packaged snacks. You can absolutely bring snacks on board as long as they're non-perishable and in sealed packages. And if you do have kids, or even if you think you just might want a snack, maybe on some chips or even some crackers, or even have a couple of granola bars in case you do go into port and you want to have a little snack, it can be a good idea to bring them with you on a cruise. Although I have to say there is a ton of food on board, including on embarkation day. So you probably won't need them. Will my bags be searched before boarding? Yes, they will be searched before boarding. All of the luggage does go through a sort of x-ray scanner and through some forms of security. And by the way, when it does come to bringing wine on board your cruise, make sure that you do put that in your carry-on bag. Don't put that in your checked luggage because it is possible that it will be removed from there. Now, something else that you'll want to prepare for your boarding day is make sure to bring some small bills with you for embarkation day. Now, this is not obligatory. However, it is customary. But when you do drop your luggage off with the porters at the cruise terminal, it is customary to give them a tip. I like to prepare that and have that ready in my hand when they do take my luggage. Now, something optional that you might want to pack in your carry-on bag, it definitely is not essential, but it might make things a little bit easier is an outfit for the evening. Now you can definitely wait for your luggage to arrive and then take out your outfit that you planned on wearing in the evening. But if you have it in your carry-on bag, it's easier to hang it up right away, get any of those potential wrinkles out, and then it is ready for later and you don't even stress about your luggage arriving. So what are you not allowed to bring on embarkation day on a cruise? Well, make sure that you do not bring any surge protectors. Those will likely be confiscated. Make sure as well that you don't bring any electrical appliances. So don't bring any irons. Those are never allowed. And you cannot bring any steamers either. You can't bring any illegal substances. And that does include anything that may have been prescribed. Well, that is illegal under federal law. By the way, in case you were wondering, there are a couple of things that you are allowed to bring. And that includes hair straightening irons that are an exception, as well as curling irons and your own hair dryer. Now I have another video that goes into way more detail about what you cannot bring on a cruise. So I will leave that right after this one. And I'm also going to leave the information all about the Lifewall Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner linked down below in the description of this video. Now, please let me know any questions that you have about cruise carry-on luggage and what to pack in your carry-on bag. Please let me know down in the comments below and please share your own tips as well. What are the things that you think are absolutely essential to bring for the first day of a cruise? I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.